Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What Aff. My name's Gareth Vornike. It's a middle name, sort of Welsh sounding. Your name is Richard Alexander Willett. And you reside 45 minutes from Norwich, but you're currently in the broom cupboard waiting for Philip Schofield. It's to um, go for me off. Go for you off. It's a puppet. Um, laundry, head over to supremecbd.uk, use the code WTAF. And um, Philip Schofield will come around your house. Now you get you get forty percent forty percent off of Philip Schofield. Okay, forty <laughs> percent off of Philip Schofield, which is just like a midget Philip Schofield. To be fair, yeah. Uh, how you how you been? How you doing? Tired? Yeah, I'm I'm all right. I'm obviously we've already had conversations because you're sort of two rooms away from me, but I did notice people malfunctioning this morning, um, which confused me a little bit because my wife keeps going the moon like the moon's off everyone's a bit off everyone's a bit emotional everyone's a bit weird everyone's a bit cray cray because we had obviously that that lunar eclipse yeah lunar um, lunatic so this morning i was at the gym at half past six when i should have been in bed and i passed a lady on the stairs and i went morning and she went mm. <laughs> and she just stopped at, mm. right and i looked at her and then she just carried on walking past me like it was fine. Like in her head, she'd said morning back. Um, so I went outside, got in the car and then on the way in, called at the local garage so that I could get something to, to eat, to bring to work. And the guy behind the counter who I see like every week I pop in, I went morning, mate. And he went, he said morning. So he was fine with that. He went morning. Is that a boop? Boop. <laughs> so he started to check things through and he went, that's, you know, how much it was five, I think pounds, please. Cheers, mate. Bye. Take it easy. Bye. And I got back in the car afterwards. I was like, He's just said a bit of a sentence for no reason. And then I, not even registered that he said it. Is that a boop, boop? Is that, is, is a thought and then the thought's gone, I'm off. I think that's where the the um, the overlapping, you know, realities are coming in. They're blurring into one. The metaverse is amalgamating. So he's just gone. You've seen two versions of him there. One's having a conversation in Boots where he's like, oh, is that an aubergine? And the other one is serving you in the garage. He's he's had, in his head, though, with his reaction, though, it was the same as the m being morning. In his head, he's asked a question, of, and I've answered it, and everything's fine. <laughs> he doesn't realise that he's just stopped talking. I do Three think, words in. Yeah, we're on the edge of something. Um, I, I've got a story about CERN today, and we're, we're messing with things we shouldn't be messing with, Gaz, right now. Um, we're always going to get here, really. Yeah, we just didn't realise that it was going to hit, you know, garage attendance before anyone else. It's the way you least expect it, mate. It is, yeah. Oh, you're right. Just smack, smack Mike about. <laughs> Go on then, let's get in your first what half. Let's do this. Um, that was a bit of a what half. Right, let's find the next one. Um, right, this one made me laugh. Because, you know, this is a conspiracy theorist podcast. I mean, we, we try and put a sort of lots light-hearted slant on it. But if we're honest, we're both fucking dangerous. So <laughs> um, this headline, solar geoengineering experiment in San Francisco injected salt crystals into the atmosphere to, uh, sorry, to reflect sunlight. Because, you know, we can't have people getting vitamin D. The project was not widely announced to avoid public backlash. I love that. We didn't tell you because it's really bad for you. Yeah, we didn't tell you because we thought you'd say no. <laughs> it was, uh, so, yeah, go on. Isn't, that, exactly, back... isn't that the same as, as basically drugging a victim well, so that they the... can't say no? Yes, it's exactly the same. They didn't say no. They didn't say no. Well, no, because she was unconscious. But you, we didn't... You didn't tell them. No, we didn't tell them because they'd got. Then they wouldn't be unconscious, and we wouldn't be allowed to make victims of them. That's how this process works. So they've just reframed that in a nice way of saying, "We didn't tell you to avoid public backlash," which means yeah. we we did something that we've been accusing you all of being tinfoil hat wearers for suggesting, um, and we just didn't tell you because we just uh, thought you'd kick off. And we don't want that. So what was the process? And they're trying to block out sunlight. So what was their belief? That they well, global this? warming, isn't it? Global warming. Uh, sun's bad. Um, carbon dioxide, even though all the plants on Earth need it to live, is bad. Um, and that's it, really, I think. Well, it basically is. It. So what we're going to do is just stop the sun. You can go away. <laughs> bad enough of you, son. You've been around for long enough. 
actually. And because, you know, it's 2024, we're being quite progressive. We need to look to the future, not this old fucking dinosaurs and shit of the past, like the sun. Like, yeah. you've had your time. It's like white supremacy. You've had your time. Now it's time for a non-sun lot to have a go. Other suprem- supremacies. You, sh- you say that, that this is this is like back in the day, but like... Actually, I was doing an interview with Paul Wallace today, excellent author. The Eden series is very good. Um, and he, in his book, I found this. And this is incredible. So it shows that he's been doing these things for a very long time. So this is from um, an ancient culture, and they called them the Mo, these things. So the feathered serpents, including <laughs> Yahweh, the home. No, I was just thinking Do maybe think that's, what, that's what the lady on the stairs was referring to. And actually, she wasn't malfunctioning. <laughs> She knows more. She's gone down the rabbit hole. Maybe she was dropping you a hint. And you... She was. Morning, Mo. <laughs> we need into... to look into the Mo people. <laughs> what makes me laugh is that Homo Erectus, wouldn't it? Which would be a great name for a gay bar. Um, okay, I went to a gay bar in New York called Rawhide, and that's still my favourite. <laughs> that is a very good one, yeah. So the Mo did not come from the Pleiades. They came from the North Star. When they came, they brought a different attitude. They altered the energy of our world so this that it was better for them but worse for us. They lowered the oxygen level to, to, dim, to dim our cognitive abilities and dumb us down. This is thousands of years old, this story. They've done a good job of it, haven't they? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that a it's working but this is wouldn't it, it's right, this is a thousand year old thousands of years it's, old there seems to be a cycle doesn't there yeah as that goes around they're playing the same same things over and again so they did this a long time ago and they put a vapor over the world apparently of metals and that to dumb us down well what do you think's happening in the skies at the moment well that's what gates boy's talking about because they're doing the same things because they're the same people. This is, again, this is from an ancient, um, I think it's from an uh, uh, Armenian tribe. This Bloody is, Armenians. Would there's be. stories from their, their, for these guys from thousands of years back called the Mo, who did the same thing at the, the time. Um, amazing, isn't it? it yeah, I, and it makes me think, because they always tell us, maybe Gates is speaking and acting like Kermit the Frog because he actually is descendant from the reptiles, you know I mean? yeah. The reptile. Oh, I think he absolutely there is some reptilian in him. Definitely. And I ain't talking frogs yeah, will legs. Be if he's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a big um, bit of reptilian in him. This was a great one. So let's go to the next one. Um we went to see our daughter get a school prize and it was handed to a boy called Tommy. Now you just think, is that a mistake? Like, do you know what I mean? It's handed out the wrong person? I, it's, it's, there's a lot of lot of sort of there's a lack of description so far. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna see if you could kind of get get the trend of it. Sue Reed, here's a mo- here's a mother's heartbreaking story over how a teacher's kept her in the dark over her fourteen year old's transition. So right, they went to they went to to a, an event expecting their daughter to get a prize, and they called up her daughter and gave it to her as Tommy. Imagine that. Imagine you going to school and then Laura, like, and um, Keith Ike, and then Laura walks up and, and gets herself, like, a, a trophy. You know, what the Good. F- Keith the... looks just like Laura. <laughs> just with a little tash. It's incredible. Patricia and Michael were bursting with pride <laughs> with their 14-year-old daughter was in, it was in line for an essay writing prize at her annual school ceremony. They arrived early to get seats with a good view of the vent. I want to see her. I want to see her. I want to see her. Held at the um, summer term two years ago. The couple were already aware that the large school secondary um, in northern England was a proud champion of trans rights lobbies charity Stonewall. Oh, best of luck. Here you go. With posters celebrating LGBTQ plus diversity. Plastered over the entrance hall. Plastered. You can't get in. No, there's nothing. Nothing says equal rights like plastering it on the wall. But nothing could have prepared them for what happened next. To their shock, they've already exploded, their child who received the prize was not their daughter, Tanya, who had left home that morning. What did they do? Did they just let her no. walk out the front? You're going to give me a she's lift? She's left home. She's, she's, she's basically like freaking Batman. She just got changed. No one knows who it is. <laughs> Bat he, her. Instead, a young figure in grey trousers with curly fair curly hair, slick back gel appeared when the teacher called up Tommy to the platform. So not only 
not only as it, just a different name, and they've kind of called him Tommy. Actually, she's gone out, Tanya. Um, like Clark Kent. <laughs> she's just taken the glasses off. Yeah, yeah. Um, slicked back her hair and gone up there as Tommy, and the parents didn't know anything about it. She's 14 years old. Yeah, it's pretty weird. I don't understand... But but that is, I mean, I, I was more surprised you said North of England. I thought that was going to be a USA story because that place has been bonkers with that shite for a long time, hasn't it? No, it's up north now. Oh, it's up north. It's not even in Brighton. It's gone all the way up north. Get down to mines, Tanya. Tommy. It... Tommy. <laughs> what are you doing, love? <laughs> doing, love. I soon dawned on them. It soon dawned on the middle class couple. Why that's important. What was happening? My daughter had changed her name and her pronouns. Patricia said yesterday at school. She was at school. She was living as a boy, and no one told us. The teachers were supporting her life changing decision. Some staff celebrated our daughter's changing identity behind our backs. Imagine that. I'd be livid to be fair as a parent. Like if yeah, Arthur because... came home and and he was like if he at school he just you went in there. And like he's got a spelling competition, he's done well. Um, and then you turn up, and Arthur's like, Carol. Spell vagina. It, it, oh. But this is again, this is all part of the state because the school is just an extension of the state, of course. Yeah. Having more say over your kids than you do. You know, at the end of the day, if if someone go, you you hand essentially you hand your kids over into their care for a period of time. Um, punishable if you don't buy fines, um, and and they should then basically take care of that child until the such point as, you know, they're back in your care, and obviously should report back. You know, oh by the way, they fell over and grazed their knee. Cheers, I've got a bump note. By yeah. the way, they've got a cock now. Apparently, all oh, right, okay, cool. I'll have a word. Yeah, we should be re-speaking about that. Yeah, I I, I don't. I just appalling, absolute appalling, and. Uh, I would be yeah, absolutely livid there. But again, it's also it's also just a phase. Tanya is yeah. fourteen years old. Isn't it funny that people are confused about their gender in the same time that they're confused about everything anyway? Because yeah. their hormones are going George W. Bunkers. They've got lots going on. They're transitioning, essentially, from a child into an adult. There's a lot. It's a confusing time. It's mm. weird. You're very very susceptible and impressionable at that point. And that's where the likes of Stonewall, um, they prey on these people. Of course they They're do. fucking wrong'uns. They're absolute wrong'uns as well. And yeah, so Tanya is now Tommy, but they didn't know about it. And that would be one of thousands of these same stories going on around the world. It's disturbing. And I worked as a, so a youth worker for many years, and I saw that mentality creeping in with these lunatic people that were starting to work as youth workers that shouldn't should be anywhere near kids. And if you pointed it out, you were... A fascist. That's not the word they use because they weren't bright enough to know what yeah. they meant. But you I know, think what that's I mean. a theme, though. That's the theme, Rich. With a lot of people, I think I would say most actually that work with kids should be nowhere near kids. Mm -hmm. And I find that because now, if I if I see someone in a in a whether they be a teacher or a youth worker or something like that, and they're great, I actually make a note of it. Oh wow, they're really good. When actually, that should sort of be a prerequisite yeah. for the gig. You'd hope so. You get the odd teacher who's, who's an absolute mentalist. I had one teacher pick me up by the neck, by the way, when I was a kid, pick me against the wall. And my dad went and did it to him, which was fun to watch. Oh, mate. But yeah, you I get one of them. If someone laid a finger on my girls, honestly, I would fucking batter them. Oh, my dad did. But he was, it's like that was, so what, how would I have been? 10? So, 10, yeah, 10, 8, nothing like that. So, 1989, maybe, um, that would have been. But now, he that was just the 80s, put though. a dress on me. Kids hit, hitting. Kids being smacked by teachers was all the rage in the 80s. Oh, I've yeah, seen all yeah. sorts. So, I mean, I, I, teachers never smacked me, I've got to say. Um, I think they probably thought what the repercussions <laughs> would be. But I've seen them smack other kids. Like, yeah, oh, a bunch yeah. of times when I was at school, yeah. Did you tap what the cane weren't that far? Um, you taught maybe two generations before us? Yeah. I mean, when, by the time I got to high school, everyone was getting caned, but it was totally different sort of vibe. <laughs> Even the teachers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go on. Then. Next you one. You got any more of those cakes, guys? Yeah, I'll sort you out after, Miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Can't stand for about... PE. You're the teacher. Let, let's go. We'll keep with the theme then. This is one I had further down the list, but we'll keep it with the theme because what the parents of Tanya Stroke Tommy have not asked themselves is what about pheasants, right? And what 
not they've not thought about it. Didn't even come up. So this week, Peter Tatchell, who's basically, uh, I just think of a backpack every time I hear his name. But Peter Tatchell was like a big gay rights activist, I think, back in the day when actually being gay was not a thing that you could get away with admitting and actually was pretty horrific to be. Um, obviously, we're far beyond that now. And we've actually gone the other way. We've gone from I want to be equal to I want to be in charge. And it's all just gone a bit freaking stupid. Um Peter Tatchell, though, has he's not just bought into the trans stuff. Like this dude is on the trans train. He's he's got a hat and a flag and everything. And so he's trying to obviously um, on the regular, um, kind of I think divert people's attention away from the interview where he said that um, I think was it a twelve-year-old boy being with a man wasn't necessarily abuse. I think I'm sure it was twelve. It was around about that age. Something he's sort of not living down. Because you can't really say things like that because that's just weird. Um, but this is what he said this week. Um, now, this is a story. Now, what I like about this, Rich, is who he's quoting. So if I'm, if I'm going for, for proving a point, you know, you, you're going to go, well, scientist says, uh, quantum physician says, you know, that it's all very much like that, isn't it? That's who you, well, That's who we want to hear from. Right, because that, that okay. So here we go. Female pheasants can change sex characteristics and become drag kings, <laughs> says museum. What do you mean museum? It's a museum. Got to do with it. What, what do you mean, mean? Says museum. The building. Well, a museum of what? <laughs> right? Still days. And what's the qualification? <laughs> it's not a biologist. It's not a, a like a, a veterinarian. It's a museum, isn't it? It's probably a bloody tractor museum. Um, when female pheasants stop laying eggs, their brown feathers turn into the brightly coloured feathering typical of males. They don't change sex, but gender attributes. So he's Hang obviously on. trying to use the uh, pheasant as an example um, that actually, you know, this, this whole kind of explosion of transgenderism is completely normal and not at all sort of, um, you know, social um, engineering or whatever. But one of the replies I like, one of the first one was, you're not a pheasant, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a ridiculous, what a ridiculous example. So if I was to go, do you know what? Okay, um, I identify as a caterpillar, but I've been a caterpillar for a bit now. So I'm going to go and sort of wrap myself up in a sleeping bag that's covered in cement. So it's going to go hard. Mm. Eventually, I'm going to have a bit of a struggle, but I'm going to kick my way out of that. And then I've got these brightly colored wings and I'm going to fly about because I'm a butterfly now. Yep. It's like everyone will go, I think he might have a bit of an issue here. I think this dude might be a bit cray-cray. Peter Tatchell comes out and goes, excuse me, a museum said that this is what butterflies do. Yeah. So that proves that actually this guy is completely correct. <laughs> it proves that sleeping with a 14-year-old is absolutely normal. Was it 14, was it? I don't know. I did got fourteen from the other one. It was making that. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a young age. It was basically saying it's. You know, if if a young person of that age consents to be with a man, then actually it's not necessarily abuse. And it's like, yeah, it is if he's underage. Yeah, that's what the law okay. the laws are there for to stop people like you, Peter, getting Very involved. Weird. Very weird. The whole, you know, you're not old enough to vote. You're not old enough to get a tattoo, but you are old enough to go off with that geezer. But as soon as they stop <laughs> laying eggs and grow feathers, they're fair game, which well, is that's it. fair trade. That's the trafficking. Yeah. Thing so, going, you know, I, I thought that there was some kind of social engineering um, and I was wrong because pheasants. <laughs> so that's his whole thing. He didn't anything else extrapolate on the on the museum. No, no, so he just, just said museum. Just been, been quite been chatting to a museum and... Um, They've basically told me about pheasants, and so now you're all fucking wrong. So I went there, and they were talking, weren't really interested in the steam trains, to be honest. And then I said, have you got anything on pheasants that I could use to possibly push my point across that this whole transgender thing is normal? And this is what they came out with. They said, uh, I can give you a sound bite. And went, I'll take it. <laughs> I have it. I'll take that back to the paper. Um, yeah. Weird, what newspaper it? was it in that he was sharing, actually? Let me have a look. Oh, it was in the pink news. All oh, right. Okay. 
<laughs> was it? Is that it was in the game? Big news, yeah. So it's, it's in it's in that um, totally non-biased and legitimate <laughs> publication. <laughs> well, um, before we go into the next one, Greta's back. Back again. Did you see it? Um, I saw her getting yeah dragged without legs. Yeah, dragged without legs. It's a, 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 a rare Westlife song. It's a B side. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> um, I've lost that now. I'm gone. Basically, they they filmed it, and um, she's sitting there with a couple of gaggle a gaggle of like unemployed, and um, they go specifically these police officers to her. She's sitting at the back left, and <laughs> ignore all the rest and go to her, and it's like, yeah. Sarge, should we? Which one should we go for? Oh, should we go for them all? No, just go for the one on the left. What do you mean? Go for the photo one. We'll go go for the one with the... Because the, that's where they, the cameras will follow you. And then get and she looks like a boy. She looks like... Do you know what she looks like? She looks like the lead singer from Hanson. She does a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Umbop, Umbop. and that stuff. Yeah. She does look like that. And she's what? She's about 21 now. That's just weird. Isn't it? She'll forever be 14 to Tatchel, though. <laughs> yeah, she is. Even if she grows feathers and stops laying eggs, it, it, what it's... made what made me laugh was how much the two guys seem to be struggling to carry her. Though, I mean, granted, she's going dead weight, and I would as well. If you're going to remove me from somewhere, you're going to work for it. Yeah. But at the same time, two grown men struggling with Greta Thunberg made me laugh because there's no to her. <laughs> there isn't no. You she's could stock... fold her up as a paper she, aeroplane and just she, throw her. She's stocky. She's a bit stocky, like. For a young lady, she's got some. Is she stocky? Well, I don't know. Well, we look at. I, I feel like she's a bit stocky, but I think it might just be. She's not wear. She doesn't wear the most flattering things, does she? Bless her heart. They they want her to look like that kind of jobless. You Maybe know, it's all those anti-Semitic octopuses she's eating. <laughs> yeah, surrounded herself. This was outside the Hague. Um, a protesters attempt to block a major highway into the Hague. A climate activist. She's still at it. She disappeared for a little while, though, didn't she? She went on on a gaycation for a little while. Well, she, back. she had a gaycation. She she had a Rona vacation as well, didn't she? Oh, did she? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, she was one of the first ones to get it. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, just so she could tell all the minions to to you know wear a mask and stuff. It was all quite embarrassing. When I get jabbed, yeah. But Be she... more subtle. But she's back, um, so it's good to have her back, to be fair. We haven't covered um, a greater story in a while, and I, I, I do miss her. I feel sorry for her. She's obviously got some sort of Asperger's going on there. But, yeah, they directly went for her at the back. The most, the, It was, a, yeah, clearly all these things are just set up for, for the photo op. But do you know what? What's the point now? Because obviously everybody knows it's a photo op and it's a load of nonsense. I mean, what is it really doing? Exactly. But you just reminded me by saying the fact that we hadn't had uh, Greta for a bit. We haven't had this geezer for a bit either, have we? Oh, here he is. Why is he? Is he? Oh no, he hasn't browned himself up, has he? No, he hasn't. He's, he's not gone that far. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. What am I doing? What's yeah, he doing he's there? a. Um, I Sam don't know Smith, what's going on there, but that's Sam Smith there, um, being felt up by someone whilst wearing a big woman's outfit. Um, he's a big guy with now. What looks like a pair of tights on his head. <laughs> Good work though, if you can get it, mate. Do you know what? Yeah, actually, you know, if I'm if I'm looking at, at, you know, electricity bills are going up, put a pair of tights on your head, son, wear quite a big corset, some tights, I'll fill you up and I'll I'll bang you a few quid. All right, mate, where do I, I sign? Well up for that. Like, you well know, for it, mate. we've been to places in the world where we saw children that were forced to go down coal mines for eight years of their life to... to drill coal out of the floor and it was awful so if someone come to me with that option instead of that option i would go with the fill me up you know to be sam fair smith thinking option. about it sam it's, smith looks i mean I, I i assumed it was a pair of tights but maybe he's been down a fucking coal mine well that's what i thought i'm looking at it thinking as he that's why i thought he'd trudeaued himself he wasn't wearing that outfit in the coal mine though he must be wearing a t-shirt look because he's not got any oh that's he hasn't got, that got any thing. coal dust on his t- on his on his uh <laughs> On his on his moves. Sam Smith option. There you go. If Israel anybody, is going to deploy the Sam Smith option. If you're ever in trouble, choose the Sam Smith option. You'll be fine. So the Samson option, they just blow everything up. Whereas the yeah. Sam Smith option, they still blow everything up. But it's like that. <laughs> 
blow up. Because yeah. Sam Smith looks like he's been blown up, doesn't he? He does, yeah. Yeah, poor guy. He was quite skinny when he, he first came out. Is that the right? He one? was. Yeah. But now he's, you know, he's gobble, gone. gobble, gobble. Um, this is this will keep you. This will be something that's hard to swallow. This story is hard to swallow. Humpback whale scoops up and spits out lobster fisherman. <laughs> okay. So, right. Go on. Yeah. Man was diving for lobster off the coast of the <laughs> northeast state of Massachusetts when a whale tried to eat him. It's a nice right. picture of him doing that there. Um, Cape Cod lobster. Cape Cod lobster. That's hard to say. There's a lot of seafood involved here. There really is, isn't it? It's all kicking off. It stinks. Diver Michael Packard, who lets his brother, um, returned to port in Pro- Pro- Provincetown on Friday with the with a big fish story of a lifetime. The commercial driver said he was collecting the claw crustaceans at a depth of forty five feet when he was swallowed up by a whale hole. <laughs> what hole? Which one? It's got a couple. Yeah, he was uh, all of a sudden. This is from him, to quote. All of a sudden, I felt this huge bump and everything went dark, Mr Packard, 56, said following his release from Cape Cod Hospital. <laughs> the hospital was Cape Cod Hospital. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, um, initially fearing he had been swallowed by a great white shark. Fucking hell, I hope it's not a great white shark. No, no it's just a whale. Just a whale, mate. Mr Packard couldn't feel any teeth or bite wounds. He's in there. Going, I'm back in. I'm all right. I've got my, my wallet. My wallet's. I'm a wallet. No signal though. Got no fucking signal in it. Um, I realised. Oh my god! I'm in a whale's mouth. I'm in a whale's mouth, and he's trying to swallow me. He told the Cape Cod Times. <laughs> Cape Cod Times. He's just. Been, he's read Moby Dick. I thought it was real, wasn't he? This is just a dream, mate. I'm just realising this. You just ripped off Moby Dick. I was completely inside. It was completely black. Yeah, it's not got any windows. <laughs> you can't even see out his blowhole. I wasn't three days. I was, it wasn't three days and three nights, but the 30 to 40 seconds of me. That's, I'm sure, three days. That's three the nights. Moby Dick thing. Yeah. It wasn't three days and three nights, but the 30 to 40 seconds Mr. Packard estimates he was inside the whale's mouth was long enough for him to fear for his life. <laughs> fear. I think I'm in danger in here. I feel yeah. like. I'm, I'm out of the comfort zone. <laughs> I mean, the smell would be something else, wouldn't it? It's a fucking chew it. Some chew it's in here and an old boat. I, I thought to myself, there's no way I'm getting out of here. I'm done. I'm dead. All I could think of was my boys. I think he's talking about his children, not his bollocks. <laughs> no, he, he's talking about the things that are holding up. Up above. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Packard, who was able to breathe by his scuba gear. <laughs> Fuck for that. You were inside the whale's mouth. Imagine I'd have suffocated if it wasn't for this thing. I just shoved that, that little pipe, shoved that up the blowhole. So you can use his blowhole as your blowhole. Like a bloody periscope. Yeah, <laughs> you can see at the top. Um, he survived because of his scuba diving gear for the ideal. He said he struggled as the whale dived, but obviously he got out after 40 seconds. He was what, if to be believed, he was um, eaten by a whale, this man. A picture of him like this. Happy well Larry. happy about it. Well happy. Mr Michael Packard recovers in hospital at the Cape Cod... <laughs> Hospital for the Cape Cod Times after being swallowed by a whale. You don't get this news anywhere else, do you? I mean, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? How's your day again? Yeah, I got eaten by a whale. You? Mm. I got nothing. Mo. I got nothing. Mo. Um. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> I don't know where to go with that other than Sorry wow, about. that's amazing. You've done well to survive. I saw a whale once, a dead one. Um. <laughs> It got washed up on the beach on the Isle of Wight. And it, this is just weird because we were in our 20s, I think. And there's a few of us just went, should we get a few beers and go down and toast the whale? And the normal reaction to that is, are you mental? But everyone did. And the, the beaches were packed. And you had yeah, loads right. of chavs jumping over the fence, that, that, like the cordon that the police had set up to try and go and touch the dead whale. It was I, all very weird. I think I remember this in the like, in the news. I didn't know it was like, yeah, oh, I, I was just sat on sat on the sea wall with a can of Cronenberg going, "Cheers, whale, for everything." <laughs> any church, any excuse for a drink, really, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Dead whale. Like, nothing else to do. <laughs> well, that's why everyone's you fart? Out. 
Yeah, he farted. Yep. Celebrate that. Yep. Yep. Ksh, ksh, that sound everywhere. Ksh. But yeah, we went and toasted the whale. I've probably got some photos somewhere of, of my mate Turl, who I'm going to go and spend the weekend with, posing with the whale. I'd love to see that. In Had a hell of a cock on it. <laughs> what, your mate or the whale? Whale, it was on its back. and it, I mean, it's dead, so it's sad, obviously. It, it got you know into the solent and got in danger. It's... I think it got caught by a propeller or something. It's horrible, but oh, it, you know, well played on that front. He's, he's lucky that he only ended up in the whale's mouth. Well, that's it. Yeah, you want a whale and in his mouth. The whale ending up in his mouth. <laughs> Come on. What's the next one? That was a good story, though. Don't tell me. Yeah. I... It was, yeah. Very good. Um, I can't compete with that. I've just got shit rod worklessness. So, remember, <laughs> people around the world might not remember, but people in the UK will. So, Pimlico Plumbers, it's a big plumbing company in London. It was run by a guy, Summit Mullins, but he looks like a shit rod steward. Um, he looks like he's had plastic surgery, but it was done by um, a duet of surgeons. Stevie Wonder and Muhammad Ali basically got together and did his fucking plastic surgery. Yeah, it's, it's, Jay it's, Fox was handing them the implements. It's a bodge job at best, but he looks a bit like Rod Stewart. Um, and so he pushed the jab massively. The, the GB News couldn't get him on telly enough. Um, and other outlets as well to push the jab, to push lockdowns, to push mask wearing, and he was just he was just a bit of a prat. And I think he he said that he wouldn't employ anyone with. The, bear in mind, he's got a large workforce because he's a multi multi millionaire. He um, he wouldn't employ anyone that wasn't jabbed and all this sort of stuff. He he let people go if they didn't go along with the thing. He was just a draconian dick. Yeah. Um. But obviously, there's there's a worklessness crisis in the UK at the moment. Part of it is probably lazy bastards. Um, but a lot of it is also down to the fact that people aren't well. Can't think why, what could possibly have happened. Um, and so he's come out and, you know, bear in mind, this is a guy that pushed the jab. He's, he's got to he's somehow get a square pole into a round hole because he can't possibly say, it might be something to do with the, this experimental mRNA technology that was put into people that I pushed. So he can't do that. So it's because we've become a sick note generation, apparently. But why have we become sick note generation? Yeah, why have we? Why, why have we become a sick note generation in perfect parallel with the rollout of an experimental injection yeah. that a lot of people will go in? I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. The guy's an absolute prat. He is a prat, really yeah. Is a prat, yeah. He is a prat. He's, he's one of them, like... He, if you if you're in a news organization like the Daily Mirror or the Sun or you know the News of the World as it was and these types, where actually you have to be slightly lowbrow, you have to be a bit fucking stupid. But you might have one or two members of staff that do all right journalism, and so they go, "This is not a bad, this is not a bad um, addition today. What can we do? What to bring it back down again? We'll get fucking get shit rod on." Because he's on. bound to say something stupid. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we'll get him in, we'll stick him on the front page, and we've brought the whole class of the newspaper down. Done. Well, what we'll do is there's a little bit of truth. Cause there's a couple of journalists here that actually started to tell the truth. So what we need is something to, to go out with it that discredits all of the news because it's so ridiculously stupid. Who's that plumber guy? Yeah. You know the one that looks like the Rod Stewart spitting image character? Yeah. yeah. Him. Yeah, the one you know, like if someone drew Rod Stewart, like, but they had to have the crayons sellotape to their fingers as they did it. That one. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. The Plimico guy. That's one. Yeah, yeah. Plimico. Plimico yeah. plumbers. Yeah, Plimico. Plimico. yeah. Get him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get him. There is um, like a guild, like the Freemasons. There's a plumbing version of that as well. So he would have been high up on on all of that nonsense as well. I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. Imagine but, that. Yeah. More more idiocy from Mr. Mullins. <laughs> All right, Liv. Um, the World Health Organization is still pushing it. Um, when you have doubts about ventilation in enclosed spaces, wear a mask to help oh, keep protect you. <laughs> give it a rest. <laughs> um, to help protect yourself and others from COVID nineteen. This is this was April the eighth, and there's a image that's gone out that says. I still wear a mask when I have doubts about ventilation. Imagine that. I don't. I have doubts about the ventilation in here. Like, have you ever analysed ventilation in any room you've ever been in? Absolutely not. No. Of Literally course never. No. Apart from if I'm in a headlock. If you can't breathe as you walk into that room, don't go in the room. 
Yeah. That's a cha- That's a gas chamber. I've got doubts about this plastic bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd take it off, mate. <laughs> Just take it off, yeah. I actually put on um, Arthur's uh, superhero mask. He got one of the Spider-Man superhero masks. Couldn't breathe. A fuck. You can't breathe. Can't breathe. It's awful. How's a kid going to wear that? You can't. You see through that. You can barely get that. I mean, that's it's not built for a, a man's head. But even Arthur's head, you can't breathe under. So I know what they feel like. If you try a child's Spider-Man costume on, you know exactly how these guys feel at the World Health Organization. Imagine um, wearing that mask for twelve hours a day, though, like some of these people were doing on. Oh, I thought like, you been Spider-Man. You know, I was like, how long do you know? How do you know how long he works? <laughs> well, he's union, isn't he? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's true. I still wear a mask when I have doubts about ventilation because it protects me and my family. And it protects us a lot from you stupid assholes as well. It means I don't have it. to see your face. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. This is, they're still pushing it. This is April the 9th, April the 8th. What was it three and a half years after the whole, maybe four years? Was it, yeah, three and a half years after the whole nonsense. I can't believe it's actually, has it been four years or three years since the three and a no, half it's been years? Four years, yeah. Four years since it, is it over four years now? Yeah, so the, in it, July, yeah. in July, that will be four years since the mask mandates were brought in in England. Oh my god! Wow, I can't believe that. I can't I believe just we're remember, all dead. I, I just remember Jeff, Rachel Jeff. sent us a what have, and I haven't included it, and I totally forgot. You find that, and I'll do my next one then. Um, while you're looking at that one, I remember it being funny. Oh, here we go. Go on, you do it. Yeah, I'll save this one. <laughs> it's denim it's jeans. You remember we were talking last week about how the jeans are banned because Kim Jong Un says that they're Americanized. It's like a, a sign of American imperialism, right? Yeah. Now, and it, the headline even starts with now. Now scientists say wearing jeans is bad for the environment. Study reveals wearing a pair just once is the equivalent to driving a car 6.4 miles. <laughs> how do you equivalent those two? How do you even do that? I wear jeans probably once a day. It doesn't make sense. So where, what's their explanation? Oh, they might be an essential piece of everyday clothing, but scientists now say that even a simple pair of jeans, as opposed to a very, very complicated pair, could be bad for the environment. Wearing a pair of fast fashion jeans just once creates 2.5 kilograms of CO2, the equivalent to driving a petrol car 6.4 miles. How? Scientists How? for the Gang Gangdong... University of Technology analyzed the life cycle of a pair of Levi's jeans from growing the cotton to the eventual disposal. Oh, come on. This is this is the energy. So when I talk about Technocracy Inc. and I talk about their energy system of uh, energy monetary system, this is exactly what I was talking about. They're actually going to use the carbon credits of how much it's carbon and energy it takes to create the project to, product to how much it'll cost you to buy it. Actually, you've just explained the psychology of the technocracy energy currents um, economy. But the absurdity also, of it. The thing, like we spoke about before, the shite that you put in to these computer models, because it would be a computer model, is the shite that you get out. So it even says here, they found that, that some genes were only worn seven times. I don't know. Earning so that so they've used that. I don't know who's who the fuck wears a pair of jeans only seven times, apart from a bloody celebrity. Um, earning them a classification of fast fashion. But, so therefore they can they can obviously input that then. But people but, don't wear. I mean, it's all bollocks anyway. But I'm pl- I'm, I'm giving it too much bloody lip service <laughs> to be honest. But people don't wear. I I probably wear a pair of jeans seven times in a week. That's like, every not, day. Not ever. <laughs> yeah, I probably do wear jeans. Yeah. Once you know once a day. But this is the thing. Why I think it's probably nonsense, right, is Dr. Yazoo, all right, so he's a fucking eight, band from the 80s, right, the study's lead author says, right, so Dr. Yazoo, obviously English isn't his first language, and the... Um, What's the um, place called? Gang, Gangdong University of Technology is obviously, I'm not sure where that is, China, I guess, maybe. It's going to be Far East, isn't it? Um the the Yazoo, the study's lead author, says, now can you imagine someone who's not English saying this? The humble wardrobe staple, a pair of jeans. <laughs> the humble wardrobe staple. At least make it, like, if you're going to write a script for a character, at least make it, like, believable. Yazoo did not say that. <laughs> did not say that. What was the hit Yazoo had? Uh, uh, making his mind, making mine up? Was that Yaz? <laughs> that was Buck's Fist. <laughs> 
That's Cheryl, what's her name? Cheryl Baker. Was it? Eggs and Baker. Do you remember that in the mornings as a kid? <laughs> Eggs and Baker. Um, yeah, um, it now has a classification. Um, sorry, it now has a significant impact on the environment. So there you go. So now I feel bad for wearing jeans. Right. Yeah, well, I don't. Um, but what, what constitutes a full wear? Well, also, like Levi jeans, I mean, they're hella expensive. But the reason, part of the reason they're so expensive, aside from having a Levi label on them, is the fact they do last forever. Like, I remember my sister had a, a Levi denim jacket the whole way through her, like, <coughs> teenage years and adult years and then gave it me. And I, I've still got it now. And yeah. I, I've, I've worn that since I was, like, 16. Oh, it's just bollocks, isn't it? it, it yeah, so, so the, 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 the famous song, I've never heard of this, was called... Um, how did I lose it? Because I just had it like right in front of me. Situation. Right. I'd never vague. heard of that. It's, it's a vague song. What's the song America? about? A situation. But just a situation. Just one of them. One of them is in. I don't know. I, I, that doesn't ring a bell with me. Yeah, so do, obviously do, do does. the lyrics. Um, oh, that's it. We can do the lyrics. Let's do the lyrics. That's a really good idea, yeah. Yazoo, situation. What does it say? Right, what does it say? Blue-eyed. Oh, so you've gone blue. Jeans yeah. are blue. Um, blue-eyed, dressed for every situation. There we go. Got the title in already. Moving through the doorway of a nation. Pick me up and shake the doubt. Baby, I can't do without. Don't mess around. You bring me down. How do you get about? Don't make okay. a sound. Just move out. I do recognise this, actually. I do, yeah. It was that bit. Because that... he's really literally speaking hour. like that. <laughs> So, move right through me can you feel the power that's the whale singing that <laughs> um i don't know what's going on it scares me but it won't be long don't mess about here go i'm trying to find the word jeans do you know about i do know it now situation don't mess, yeah don't mess me around dun, 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 dun. um um now in control lover brother it doesn't say jeans so no. now I'm not, I'm not sure that they've actually led authored that i the only one I know, the only song I know about any sort of denim-related uh, garment is Billie Jean, and that's it. He's not my lover. I mean, he's not my lover, and these aren't my jeans. I just, if you stiff them after seven days, you'll tell. Um, yeah, weird, isn't it? Doesn't make any sense. What's the point? Someone got paid to do that study. Yeah, what a load of nonsense. And but that's that must just be. It's like it's like me and you now being you know wearing tights on our face and getting fondled for money. That's basically what. These scientists are doing because they know he's, mm. he's there in his in his little white coat going, if I do any legitimate tests of anything to do with climate and I show that it's bollocks, I'm mm. done. Like I'm finished. I'm going to end up on a podcast on Iconic. Like I'm finished. <laughs> right? But but if I just go to them and go, mate, jeans are bad for the environment, he knows that they are literally going to go, how much do you need, son? Yeah, have some of that. How so much do you is... need? The equivalent of it's the Sam the Sam Smith option. He's taking the Sam Smith option. Yeah, He's just made something up. Just take the Smith, Sam Smith option. Just means do something really stupid that, <laughs> that pushes the agenda forward, and you'll get paid. Take the Smith. There you take go. The Sam Smith option. Put that on a mug, on a T-shirt. You can have that. The Sam Smith option. Um, also known as the Daily Wire option. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a look at this one. So this one is. So I brought this up in an interview today with um, Paul Wallace. Harvard professor claims that UFOs could have travelled to Earth via extra dimensions that CERN scientists are trying to unlock. Well, we've been saying this for ages. What are they letting in through these? They are doing some Marvel shit, man. They are. They really, really are. And now I think they've got to the point where they're going to have to admit it. This is, a, as I say, a Harvard professor. CERN scientists are seeking evidence of six extra dimensions inside the whale. Um, Professor Avi Loeb believes aliens might travel through such dimensions. They're opening up doors in and out. It's like anything. How do they think Pimlico Plumber Guy got here? <laughs> and he hit the fucking door, revolving door on the way in, clearly. Really did. <laughs> Bounce off the side. The US government has yet to unravel the mystery sightings of UFOs soaring through our skies. No, they haven't. They just haven't told us about it. But a Harvard professor believes the answer may sit 300 feet below the surface. A.V. Loeb, known for his efforts to, to prove that we are not alone, has claimed that extraterrestrial visitors are travelling through hidden dimensions created by researchers at CERN part, um, with their particle accelerator. And they are seeking it. There's also a particle accelerator hidden um, below Columbia University that was used in um, 
one of the, the Manhattan Project as well. So they've been doing this for ages, um, opening up these vortexes into elsewhere and going in and out. This is they're just having to kind of I think this is this soft kind of reveal of what they've been doing for a very long time. And um, I believe this is like, oh, yeah, they've always been here, but they're your masters. Now serve them. This is what is going on. And they've got this got it the Shiva goddess or god, the god Shiva there, which is one of a I say it, like a trinity of gods. Oh, it's they got have a destruction. So. Yeah. That's the destruction part of it. Does so creation, destruction, and something else. But um that's the the Shiva part of it is one of three gods. And there's that statue there. Um they're yeah. not they've been telling you for a long time. They're fucking around with stuff over there. Um but yeah, so now they've they're just gently telling you that they've opened up portals into other places um and have seen like demonic entities within the the uh the large hadron collider themselves that's an old story of seeing faces in the the window thing like fucking hell so now six extra dimensions imagine that at least just, where'd you put your telly i'm i'm for me like i, I don't believe anything they do is by accident w- whatsoever i don't and so, you know, even just to look at, even if you if you've not got a Tim Four hat on and you're you're sat in front of Coronation Street and you 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 know you're doing quite well for yourself financially, so you don't bother yourself with all this sort of stuff. <laughs> if you look at CERN and the opening of CERN and that opening ceremony and how satanic and demonic that was, that was next level dark, and how you've got all those top end brass politicians from all over the world there, you know, with all this shit going on, just ask yourself the simple question: Why? Mm-hmm. Say why. Same with the London Olympics. Why was the opening ceremony so fucking demonic? Was that the one with the babies? The big yeah. babies, the dead... It was COVID, basically, wasn't it? Well, yeah, basically. But, yeah. You, but you have to ask yourself, why was that? Why? Oh, no. No, go on. I'm Generally, explain it to me. It's an Olympics. It's supposed to be celebrating the greatness of the human, human family. Explain to me why they did that. Mm. But the, you won't be able to explain it without going because they're fucking mental. Yeah, exactly. Because they're mental and they're trying... To, it was 2012, wasn't it? The London yeah. Olympics, yeah. So, I mean, that's how many years? Eight years? Well, Eight you had the guy, the didn't you, who was, who was exposing loads of stuff to do with the, the London Olympics and then was murdered, wasn't he? I, th- I feel like his, his, his name was Clay. And now I feel mm. really bad for not remembering his name. But he'd done loads of research. Oh, OK. Um, and he was killed. Oh, um, Jesus. That makes it. I mean, it's clear that they've been doing this stuff. Look at the, Madonna was in Manhattan a couple of weeks ago doing a satanic ritual on stage. It was quite bloody obvious what it was. They're all at it. We got Taylor Swift doing these things. I mean, they're all absolutely these satanic rituals have been going on for thousands of years, but now they do them through art. But that's it. Yep. CERN opening it up with that. It was like Baphomet heads everywhere, wasn't it? And creeping yeah. around doing this weird dance thing. And then but Abramovich, we, that woman. When we, oh, what a dark entity she is. But when we went to Scotland, obviously, and we did the stuff on the Berwick witch, witch trials, and then obviously mm. you got the Salem witch trials, and you, you had witch trials in England as well. And you, you look at um, that kind of stuff, and, and part of your kind of the explanation for it is like, look how mad people were back then. Wasn't it awful? And it's like, yeah, it was, but but was that really the king losing his marbles and thinking people were was a witch, or was that a big fuck off Gert sacrifice? That was a sacrifice. I completely agree with you. He knew exactly what he was doing. He wouldn't young lose virgins. His marbles. Yeah, children burnt at the stake. Yeah, I yeah, think they weren't witches, dude. No, no. Well, we went to Balmoral and look at the big stone pyramid there that was supposed to be bit for the husband, was it, of uh, Victoria's husband? If you, there's no way. I've just done an article about this on Richard.WellIt'sNotStumpsNake.com. Um, and there's no way that the Queen walked up there the, the way we did. We, we hiked up there. We were all knackered um, with cameras and shit to shoot um, a comedy skit. And there's no way she walked up there. So how did she get there? There's tunnels. Shot from a cannon. <laughs> Spat out of a whale's blowhole. Right That's up there. That's how she died. <laughs> they won't tell you that. Because she died well, at Balmoral, didn't she? Yeah, she, she did on, on the side of a pyramid. <laughs> stuck to it like that yeah don't joke about the queen i do what i want um she yeah there's no way she walked there though was there absolutely no, no way she walked not with those goat legs <laughs> them trotters and she she there's tunnels so where do these tunnels go like that is on a massive hill so that i believe that pyramid the bit that we were seeing was just the top part of a bigger pyramid that goes far it, further down. it was strange when we went there i didn't even know that was a thing and then we, if people at home don't know it, just Google Balmoral Pyramid. Honestly, mm. some of the footage that you can find from the air is extraordinary. 
Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. And it was a great place to film, but totally creepy. There's one in Blicklin Hall as well, in the woods there, which is in Norfolk, and that's even more creepy. But they're all out in the woods. They're all like a good... Oh, it will be. Yeah, a good distance from the house. So you're getting to them through tunnels. That's not... They're yeah. not walking through... So what's going on from the main houses to the tunnels is what I think one day you're gonna we're gonna find out what's going. This the whole what's the uh, famous one in Belgium the uh, uh, the witches one the uh, mothers of darkness one. Have you oh, that paedophile group. Yeah, well that's the the whole the uh, well that's the castle. It's called the mothers of darkness castle in Belgium and Edward Heath was supposed to be one of the people that, that went there to, to visit that place which doesn't surprise me at all um, no they love it don't they same way they King King Charles loves fucking Transylvania yeah well he's related isn't he blood yeah, he's... related literally but there you go these satanists are everywhere but now they're, whole, they're opening up portals into different places and, and celebrating it right in front of people's eyes but the more but us with our Tim Fall hats on are the only ones that seem to be. Maybe that's what you need to put on to be able to tap into this nonsense because everybody else seems to be ignoring it. No matter what they do, you've got Rihanna and everyone doing this stuff in front of kids, and it's it's revolting. What's going on under that umbrella, Ella, Ella, Ella? Well, the black umbrella was supposed to be a is a protection, isn't it? It's a protection thing for the, the Illuminati. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what I need to remember this. I need a blue roof, a black umbrella, <laughs> a blue butterfly. What else do I need? <laughs> All um, no conscience, and oh, uh, well, yeah. take the Samsung up the Sam the Sam Smith, Smith option. Take the Sam Smith option. There's your title. Where can they get their CBD from? Head over to samsmith dot no. Head head over to supremecbd.uk Use the code WTA. Uh, oh bloody! I'll start again. Go on. Supremecbd.uk Use the code WTAF. You get forty percent off everything. Bosh. We we'll see you in a week's time. Hope you enjoyed that. And we didn't even we refrain from disrespecting Jesus or um, Robert Kennedy in this whole podcast. So we didn't really talk about Israel either. We've 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 we've, we've had our instructions, haven't we? Yeah, we took the Sam Smith option. Sam Smith option. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Is this a?